Welcome back. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to get started using Git with Eclipse. Now, we are going to assume that you have some familiarity with Git. You don't have to be an expert in it. Uh, but at the same time, I'm only going to show you how to get started in it using Eclipse. We're going to be using GitHub for these demonstrations. So if you don't already have an account at GitHub, you should go ahead and sign up for, sign up for one. Uh, they're free. Uh, if you sign up with an EDU account, you can get some free stuff out of it. Uh, of course, you could go ahead and use Bitbucket, uh, GitLab, or any number of other Git uh, repository solutions. Once you've signed up and you've logged into GitHub, you're going to want to create a repository to hold your code that you're going to start working on in Eclipse. So I'm going to do that really quickly here. We're just going to demonstrate this using a basic Hello World program. Uh, now, if you're doing this for code for your project or other sen sensitive code, you're going to want to make it into a private repository. Uh, if it's for lab, of course, all that code is public. Uh, but of course, you're going to want to follow whatever guidelines have been set out for uh, your assignments in this course. We won't worry about adding a readme file or a get uh, ignore yet. I'll show you how to do that later. Now, if you were working from the command line, of course, then you would follow these next steps here, uh, where you would initialize your repository, uh, add uh, files, uh, commit those files, and then push those files out to this remote repository hosted by GitHub. Uh, but since we're going to be using Eclipse, it's a little bit different process. First of all, let's go ahead and create a simple Hello World project. Remember that we're going to skip creation of modules. All right, now before we make our first commit, before we uh, initialize this repository, uh, let's go ahead and add some additional files here. The first thing we're going to want to do is to create a readme file. I'm going to make it into a readme.markdown file, MD for short. Uh, now we might have covered this before or we'll cover it later for your project, uh, but uh, as far as GitHub is concerned, uh, this, if it were a public facing repo, uh, then this readme would be displayed on the front page of your uh, repository. It's intended to tell other people what your repository is about. If it's a private repository, you can probably skip this since nobody's going to be seeing it. Uh, but at the same time, you may eventually want to make it public and it's good practice to follow. Besides, picking up Markdown and using it uh, is a valuable skill. We're not going to cover the exact syntax of how to uh, use Markdown, but it's basically a minimalistic uh, markup language. That's why it's called Markdown as a joke. Uh, but over here, what you can do is you can go to Markdown source and you can start typing in Markdown. Uh, for example, uh, to create a title, then you use the hashes. For subtitles or heading, uh, second headings, third headings, etc., you would just add another hash mark. You can also add URLs, emails, and of course, they will automatically be uh, converted and rendered into clickable links. It doesn't look like much over here because this is plain text, but over here in the preview, you can see what it looks like. We're also going to add a basic git ignore file. Now the file name has to begin with a dot and it's then git ignore all lowercase, one word. Now over here in your package explorer, it's going to be hidden because it starts with a dot. Uh, but what we can do is we can add uh, files in here that should be ignored by your repository. Uh, for example, the binary files, the class files, we don't want to check those into the repository uh, because that's not source code. 
Uh, we might also have other project specific things that we don't want to check into the repository that are particular to Eclipse, like Eclipse metadata and stuff like that. Uh, in fact, it's usual to go out and find a canonical uh, git ignore file for whatever uh, IDE or whatever project you're using. And I've already done that here. I'll of course provide this link at the end of the video. It'll ignore things like the metadata, uh, the binary uh, folder that where all the class files are actually compiled to, uh, local properties, settings, things like that, which may actually be different. And so you would not want to commit them to the repository. Uh, they might be different on your collaborators' machines. Now that our project is set up, we need to set up our Git repo. I'm going to go ahead and go over here to my Git perspective. Remember we covered that in a previous video. If you don't have that Git perspective up here, you can always click on the add perspective uh, and then select it. I'm going to create a new local Git repository and I can do that by clicking this button over here or I can go do that by clicking this icon up here. These three things may not necessarily appear once you have a repository already created. You will need to browse into your workspace and choose the folder corresponding to your project as the Git repository. That step is basically equivalent to git init from the command line. Now let's go ahead and expand this out. In the working tree, that's where all of our artifacts and that's where all of our code is. You can see that git ignore file that we just created the readme file that we've created, and of course all the source code, the bin folder that we're going to end up ignoring with that git ignore. And we also have other things like uh, the project metadata here. Since this is my first commit, I'm going to add the entire working tree to it. I'm going to add this to the index. That's equivalent from the command line of adding all. Now I can select the project and select commit. You can see down here that these are all the files that we'll end up committing here. That git ignore file is ignoring the dot settings and the dot bin and other metadata that we don't need and don't necessarily want to commit into our repository. I'll write a descriptive message since this is our initial commit. Of course, we'll go ahead and just call it our initial commit. You can go ahead and click commit. Now that's committed to our local repository. Uh, it has no connection to that remote repository that we've already created on GitHub. So now we need to make that connection. Right click the project, select remote and push. Enter the URL of the GitHub repo that you just created. Enter your GitHub credentials. Select master and click add spec. Then you can go ahead and click push to push those changes to the remote repository. Again, enter your GitHub credentials. If you want to, you can store them locally. I tend not to uh, for security reasons. Upon success, you should see something like this. And if you go back to your repo and hit refresh, you can see that the files are now committed. Now, if you're working with a partner, you'll both want copies of your project repository so you can both push commits to it and pull each other's changes. On GitHub, to add a collaborator, you go to Settings, Manage Access, and Invite a Collaborator. You'll of course need their email or their GitHub username. Once you've done that, they can actually clone your repository uh, and then make changes and then push those changes. What I'm going to show you is how to make those changes and then push those changes. And then later on, I'm going to show you how to pull your partner's changes. First of all, let's go ahead and go back to Eclipse into our Java perspective. And let's make a change to our hello world. I've added a line here. Now let me go back to my Git perspective. 
And you can see that we have unstaged changes right here. Here's one trick. You can double click on that and it'll pull up a diff. On the left hand side, you can see the local file. On the right hand side, you can see the last commit. And you can see that we've added this one line here. You can add all of the changes or you can select individual files and add them to be staged. Again, this is equivalent to git add. You can commit those changes just like we did before. And then you can push those changes. Over here in our repository, we can see those changes. And we can look at the history. I added a nice question one minute ago. Now, what does it look like if somebody else makes their own changes? All right, what I've done is I've made changes using a different uh, method. Let me go ahead and refresh the page and show you. 31 seconds ago, I committed a reply. You can see the history here. There was the initial commit, we added a nice question, and I added a reply. Now, I was doing this as a single user, but of course, if you were working with a collaborator, uh, their name would appear right here instead. Now, over here in Eclipse, you can see that we don't have that change here. What we need to do is we need to pull that change down from the remote GitHub repo. You right click the project and select pull with the ellipsis. Everything might already be filled out. If it's not, go ahead and enter the URI or the URL of your remote repository. Enter the reference as master. And now we see that we have an added reply. And our local file has been updated. Now you can push and pull with your partner. Even if you're not working with a partner, you should still be using Git because you should be getting into the habit of using this awesome tool, as well as having a backup to your code on a remote server. For other ways of using Git and Git alternatives, see the course webpage.